So following like your kind of religious progression, you know, you were Bukai at one point, which uh, kind of uh, proceeds Islam, then you kind of came back to Christianity. Uh, but just in reference to your content, a lot of the stuff you make is related to masculinity, femininity, the kind of progressive sexualization, secularism, atheism. Uh, I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on how Islam handles that and uh, like how much you know about the Muslim kind of point of view on those subjects. About the which point of view? The Islamic point of view. Uh, are you Muslim? Yeah, yeah. I'm Muslim. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know much. Um, I said what I said earlier. I really mean what I said earlier that like I admire Muslim men because <laughs> for the most part, they've retained masculinity. They've maintained that order. But us Americans, we're over there with them. Why are we with them? Let them live the way they want to live. The women, are, I don't hear Muslim women complaining about I guess Sharia law or whatever it is that asks them to cover their heads. It's from what I meet most Muslim women or I speak or I hear about them. They do it out of respect. They do it out of reverence. They're happy to do it. But we over there trying to tell them that women need to be in government and that women need to be involved in all this other shit and that women need liberation. I don't think they want it. I think they they can want to live, they want to live Muslim conservative lives, but we can't even do that as Christians any longer. We You cannot be a Christian conservative, but you could be a Muslim conservative and nobody will say anything. So I don't know much about it, uh, but from what I see, I kind of like the attitudes of the guys that are in the faith. Mm -hmm. So um, with you being part of the Baha'i, from what I understand of, the Baha'is, they accept uh, the Prophet Muhammad, I mean, peace and blessings be upon him, but I think they accept other people as well. So, uh, but you reverted uh, before that, before when you went to Christianity. So I'm just wondering what your kind of point of view is on uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if, uh, what made you go two steps back instead of one? <laughs> These are good questions. My, I don't, I don't, I don't have an opinion. I have a book I read about him and, and I learned a little bit about him in history. Um, but I, I'm not that familiar. I don't, I can't tell you that much. Um, I, as a Baha'i, that's when I learned most of what I knew about wow. the Muslim, Muslim faith. faith. Uh, but I'm not, I'm really not educated. I'm really, I don't have an opinion. Okay, fair enough. Uh, if you liked, maybe I could send you a book or something. If you were interested in researching it or talking about it, you could send me a book. Guys send me books all the time, man, and I and I would read it because I'm a seeker of truth, man. I just I just want to know what the truth is, and it just see almost seems like everything contradicts itself. Sure. So I've been kind of like, a, like child a child in my faith lately. Mm -hmm. I've been kind of like a child in my in my faith in that like I just accept the faith that was given to me as a child. That's how, that's how I reverted. When you say revert, right? You know, sure. I went backwards. I really did. I reverted because I was like, I got to stop. I just wanted to stop. I was like, I just need to rest. And as a place where mm -hmm. I chose to rest and I like the faith. I love the Catholic faith. I don't like what it's become. I don't like where it's going. I don't like the leadership. And there's a lot of problems, but I'm sure there's problems everywhere. Sure. Yeah, man. Um, so, what what do you know about the uh, about the life of the Prophet Muhammad? Like, uh, do you know about the kind of takeover of Mecca and the idolatry and the uh, that side and some of the miracles that surrounded his kind of background in his life? And miracles that surrounded his idols. kind of background in his life. I know he came in. I just remember the story about him coming in and had all the idols, and he smashed up all the idols, and there was one left. And he said, "That's Allah." And so he united all of the tribes. I guess these were tribes in, uh, I don't know where, Saudi? But they were, they were all tribes. Yeah, tribes. yeah that's right. Yeah, they're all warring tribes. They were all segregated, fighting with one another. And he came in and united, united them all, all under, under one, one banner. And that's quite a quite feat. A yeah, if if you want, I can tell you a little bit about it. I can give you a brief run through, or if you prefer, I can send you a book and we can talk about it at a later date. 
Yeah, just send me a book. I mean, I'm open. You could you tell me whatever you want to tell me right now, but you can send me the book too. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess I'll do both. So um, just to kind of put it into perspective, like what he achieved and, you know, just even from a historical uh, perspective, I recommend anyone researches a story because if you think about it, um, uh, 40 years, so the difference between our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Prophet Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him also, is that Jesus was born a prophet, whereas we believe the prophethood didn't start for uh, Muhammad until he was 40 years old. So um, up to 40 years old, he like he was um, orphaned, he was uneducated, he was illiterate, but he managed to build a reputation around Mecca, and his reputation was Al-Amin and Al-Sadiq, uh, which is the truth, the trustworthy and the truthful. That was his reputation. So um, the one kind of, like his life is incredibly well documented, just to show you. Like we have uh, these books of Hadith, and in these books of Hadith, like we have what he said on like every different topic, like hundreds of different topics. We have the narrators, we have uh, who said it, who they were, when they were born, who they were married to, who their children were. So all these aspects of his life, of uh, we can see the chain of narration, so how well this information is actually being preserved. This isn't the Quran, this is just the um, surrounding text about you know, his life. And what we know from his life is he had this like contention with the society about uh, their uh, idol worship because the sin of those people at that time were that they were idolaters, they were uh, selling statues in the streets, the, the government were in control of the gods, uh, the government were telling you buy this god, buy that god, uh, their entire economy was uh, built on tourism because people would come to Mecca to like, see these gods and buy these gods, and people travel from all over to do it. So this guy who had this reputation of being trustworthy and truthful at 40 years old, he's meditating upon this mountain, Mount Hira, when uh, he was approached by the angel uh, Gabriel, who came to him and gave him the first revelation of the Quran. So one thing about Muslims is we don't believe that he authored the Quran. Instead, we believe that he it was revealed to him that it's the uh, preserved word of God and that Arabic Quran that we have is still, um, that is what we call Kalimatullah, that's the word of God. So he comes down, this person of, with a massive reputation of being truthful and trustworthy, saying that he is a messenger from God in the line of all these prophets of monotheism that uh, these people were unfamiliar with because they practiced paganism. So anyway, as his story kind of progressed, like, you know, people, even historians believe that he was honest in saying that he was a messenger of God. Because if he wasn't, you need to say what were his motivations. One motivation might be he was, uh, he just wanted power. But upon getting all of this traction, eventually, slowly, 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 I mean, he sacrificed a good life of a good reputation for being ridiculed and attacked and uh, belittled. And that's what he gave away. And as he started to build up his reputation slowly and steadily, Eventually, the people of Mecca, his government came to him and said, you need to stop this because you're damaging our economy, you're damaging tourism, you're going to uh, destroy this way of life which we've had for generations. And they made this offer to him. They said, we'll give you money, we'll give you power, we'll give you keys to the Kaaba, just shut up, basically. And what we have is an authentic hadith, is this quote where he says, you could put the sun in my left hand and the moon in my right hand. And I still would not accept uh, what you're saying to me because this is everything. So one thing is that he was a liar. The other accusation might be that he was crazy. But as I said, like this extent, this is just one book of Hadith. There are like, uh, so the most authentic ones are Sahih Bukhari, this. the Sahih Muslim, again, equally as big, large as this. And Termidhi, no narration of the thousands of people who ever interacted with him uh, came out to say that he was crazy. And if you're crazy, of course, it's very hard to disguise that you're crazy. But yeah, for the story to progress, I mean, just imagine a 40-year-old born in America and over the next 20 years of his life, he takes over America and changes everything. Not even just becoming the president, but like he changes how people greet each other, how they do business with each other, how they uh, interact with each other, how they conduct their day. Like everything was changed to the point now, 1,400 years later, we still have this preserved book. Uh, furthermore, I won't go into this just now. I don't know if your audience want to hear it. And I'm sure there's other guys that want to talk to you. But look up the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad. If you Google that, you'll see some of the things which he said about the demasculization of men, about the globalization, about the 12 buildings uh, being built all over the Middle East. Uh, there's, uh, I think, maybe 70 or 80 things he's narrated to say of signs of the end of times. But the other thing I might just leave you with, or 
Like we believe the ultimate miracle is the Quran, this perfect book, which is the source of all grammar, uh, Arabic grammar and literature, which, you know, came from this guy in the desert who was uneducated and is now the fourth most spoken language in the world. So, um, yeah, we say that's his main miracle, but another just like, fantastic example of a miracle is, have you ever heard of the splitting of the moon? No. Okay, so the uh, splitting of the moon, I'll just, I'll leave you with this, right? And uh, I'll send you a book, I'll send you a copy of the Quran that you can have a look at. But when he was amongst the people of Mecca, they said, if you're a prophet, prove it, <coughs> do a miracle. He says, what miracle do you want to see? And they said, split the moon. So he, oh well, there he goes.